Hi, I'm Dr. El Mansouri, and this is the Sutton Brain Hub video on the parotid gland and related nerves. The parotid gland is the largest of the three salivary glands. It is positioned in the face anteriorly to the ear. Like the other salivary glands, it produces enzyme-rich serous saliva, which is then secreted into the oral cavity to lubricate it and help with chewing, swallowing, phonation or speech, and digestion. The saliva is carried by the parotid duct, which arises from the anterior surface of the gland, traversing the masseter muscle. Then it pierces the buccinator, moving medially and opening into the oral cavity near the second upper molar. The parotid gland can be divided into deep and superficial lobes, separated by the facial nerve. It lies within a space known as the parotid region. For better understanding of its location, let's have a look on this diagram. It's bounded superiorly by the zygomatic arch, inferiorly by the inferior border of the mandible, anteriorly by the masseter muscle, and posteriorly by the external ear and the sternocleidomastoid. Several nerves and vessels pass through the gland, which are relevant operatively. The facial nerve, cranial nerve 7, gives rise to five terminal branches within the parotid gland. These branches innervate the muscles of facial expression. If you want to find out more about the facial nerve, check out our Sutton Brain Hub video on the subject. The external carotid artery ascends through the parotid gland. Here it gives rise to the posterior auricular artery. It then divides into its two terminal branches, the maxillary artery and the superficial temporal artery. The retromandibular vein is formed within the parotid gland by the convergence of the superficial temporal and maxillary veins. It is one of the major structures responsible for venous drainage of the face. Let's talk a little about blood supply. The arterial supply to the actual gland is supplied by the posterior auricular and superficial temporal arteries. They are both branches of the external carotid artery. Venous drainage is achieved via the retromandibular vein, which in turn is formed by the unification of the superficial temporal and maxillary veins. Let's talk about the innervation of the gland. The parotid gland receives sensory information but it is the autonomic innervation that controls the rate of saliva production. Remember, autonomic innervation is divided into sympathetic, so think fight or flight, and parasympathetic, think rest and digest. The parasympathetic innervation to the parotid gland is complex, but we can simplify it. It begins with the glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve 9, which synapses at the otic ganglion, the auriculotemporal nerve then carries parasympathetic fibres from the otic ganglion to the parotid gland. The auriculotemporal is a branch of V3, the mandibular nerve. Parasympathetic stimulation causes an increase in saliva production. Think saliva for digestion, rest and digest. Sympathetic innervation originates from the superior cervical ganglion, part of the paravertebral chain, or the sympathetic chain. This sounds intimidating, but it is just a long chain of ganglia next to the vertebrae. Fibres from the ganglion travel along the external carotid artery to reach the parotid gland. Increased activity of the sympathetic nervous system inhibits saliva secretion via vasoconstriction. Remember, the sympathetic system opposes the action of the parasympathetic. Sensory innervation is supplied by the auricular temporal nerve for the gland itself, and the great auricular nerve for the fascia. Let's talk a little bit about diseases that affect the gland. Salivary gland tumours are not common. They make up 6% of all head and neck tumours. Having said that, our newfound understanding of the gland and its location allow us to appreciate the damage that they can do, especially if managed incorrectly. The parotid gland is the most common site of salivary gland tumours. The tumours are usually benign and slow-growing, such as a pleomorphic adenoma. 
tumours of the submandibular and sublingual glands are less common, but more likely to be malignant or cancerous. Treatment usually involves surgical excision of the tumour and the parotid gland, known as a parotidectomy. During this procedure, it is important to identify and preserve the facial nerve and preserve as many of its branches as possible. Damage to the facial nerve or its branches will cause paralysis of muscles of facial expression. The affected muscles will lose tone and the area will sag. This can be very distressing for the patient and careful, thorough consenting of this risk is essential preoperatively. Parotitis refers to inflammation of the parotid gland. Think itis, inflammation. Usually it's a result of an infection. The parotid gland is enclosed in a tough fibrous capsule which limits swelling of the gland, producing pain when there's inflammation. The pain produced can be referred to the external ear. Remember, sensory innervation to the gland is provided by the auricular temporal nerve, and as the name suggests, this nerve also supplies sensory innervation to the external ear. And that's all from us from another Sutton Brain Hub video. If you enjoyed that, make sure to subscribe and have a look at our other free videos and resources that you can use for your medical education. Find us on Facebook, Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.